Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to the City of God ministry. And in a short while, we'll be, we, we will be live streaming our Bible in Focus program, our live stream program. And if you're watching, if you're watching this live stream from your um, Facebook page, if you're watching this live stream from your Facebook page, uh, may we request that you like, click on like, comment, and share it to your friends. Tell them that the City of God ministry is actually now live so that they would have the chance to, <clears throat> to watch this with you and for them to be able to experience what, what the Bible in Focus live stream is all about. And also, if you're, if you're watching, if you're watching this live stream, this Bible in Focus live stream through your YouTube channel, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this, to this channel. And don't forget that notification bell. Just click on it so that you will be up to date with what we are uploading in our YouTube channel as well. And uh, regarding our, regarding our, uh, I mean, regarding our membership program in the City of God ministry, it is, it is still, still ongoing. So we encourage everyone to, to join us, be a member, be an active member of the City of God ministry, and also be up to date about our Bible exposition. We, we are resuming every Saturday, 1.30 to 3.30. So if you're interested both in the membership and also in, in joining our every Saturday Bible exposition, um, Contact us after after this program, so that we would be able to assist you to if you have any questions regarding the City of God ministry. Okay, so we will be starting now our Bible in Focus live. Shouldn't it be that our spirituality be the basis of our everyday normal lives? I mean, if you actually look at it in a different in different levels and perspectives it seems to be there is no escape from this that if you look at it there is only one reality and the fact is there is always a bar a standard where we are actually measured up against whether you believe it or not that is a brute fact there is nothing we can do but to live with it. Hi, this is Christopher Nino Arca, and you're watching Bible in Focus, where we will talk about our experiences and human conditions in light to sacred scripture. We now live in a world where everyone is on their own. The prevailing mindset the, the prevailing mindset of that each one is his own. Each one is, each is to his own, I mean. That this generation, today's generation, fell into the trap of superficiality. There is no depth anymore. No content. No substance. Nothing concrete to hold on to but to the fleeting temporal moment. Everything is disposable and fast. I mean, fast relationship, fast cars, fast foods, fast everything. And that is a very sad reality. And the worst part, not only did humanity fell on its own corrupt practices, and that is because humanity turned back. Because humanity doesn't believe anymore. Why? Why is it that way? I mean, if we go back to the scriptures, in Psalms 10, verse 4, in all his scheming, the wicked person arrogantly thinks there, there's no accountability since there is no God. Also, if we look at in chapter 14, verse 1, of the book of Psalms. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do vile deeds. 
There is no one who does good. The new norm of today's generation, sad to say, the new norm is a twisted sense of morality. Take a look around you. Drag shows, drag queens, left and right, they call themselves that. The perfect example is that fiasco that happened at the Paris Olympics when people mocked the scene of the Lord's Supper. Also, there was the mockery that the people did out of the Blessed Sacrament, bless, uh, I mean Blessed Eucharist, and posting that despicable act online. People living already an immoral lifestyle and now they desecrate things consecrated to God? This is a very degenerate generation. Let me share with you what Paul wrote his letter to the Romans. That's Romans chapter 1, verses 21 to 22. Where it says here, For though they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became worthless, and their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Take a good look at this text. The words of this text point to us in its entirety. The words here describe perfectly how the people of today's generation live. I mean, don't you see? Our generation of today has this privilege of knowing God. Because unlike in the past, now we have open access to God's words. And, and with all these, people still chose to ignore God to turn their backs on Him and not believing in Him. Human progress became de de derogatory. I mean, human progress became derogatory in the face of God, as if there is no use for God anymore. That there is no use to believe. As a preacher, for me, this, is not, this not only saddens me, but it also enrages me. I, I stand here in the presence of every one of you reminding you how folly your behaviors are. I mean here, in Romans 3, Romans 3, verses 9 to 18, let me share that with you. What then? Are we any better off? Not at all, for we have already charged that both Jews and Greeks are all under sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. All alike have become worthless. There is no one who does what is good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They deceive with their tongues, vipers. Venom is under their lips. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and wretchedness are in their paths, and the path of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. The question here in verse 9 is applicable to everyone up until now as well. I mean, do you think that you're different? No, you're not different. You are exactly how the people of the past were. All of you are all under sin. You, you think you can do anything you want? That you are not accountable for anything? That you think you are perfect, that you are not doing anything wrong. Think again. Verse 10, as it is written, there is no one righteous. 
Not even one. This is as clear as daylight. Not one can say that they are a good person. None of you can say that unless you surrender yourself to the sovereignty of God and accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ in your lives, you cannot honestly say that you are living a blameless life. Here in verse 11, what does it say? There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. The other side of this statement holds true as well. And what is that? You can only understand to the point if you seek God. That's the only way to go. It's hard to believe today that people claim to be Christians and yet they refuse to acknowledge God. Living their lives as if there is no God, you could see my point rather clearly by taking a look at people around you. People letting this abominable practices happen. People consenting to immoral lifestyle. Even of that LGBTQ community. These so-called drag queens, they call themselves that. If you do actually take a deep look into their eyes, you could see that there is no sense of humanity left. They became worthless human beings as exactly as what Paul wrote next here in verse 12. All have turned away. All alike have become worthless. There is no one who does what is good, not even one. Let me ask you one thing. When was the last time you truly looked for God and did what is actually right? I mean, or have you looked out after yourself alone? If you do not seek, if you do not actually seek God, how sure are you that you are doing the right thing anyway? I am saying this because Apart from God, your life would not show the kind of the gifts or the fruits of the Spirit. That is the only way possible. That is only made possible if you have the faith in Christ Jesus. What are these fruits anyway? Paul wrote that to the Galatians which we will be turning the pages of the Bible here. It's in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. You cannot have love if you do not know love. You cannot have love and know love if you are not in Christ. And that goes with the rest of it. You cannot have true joy. You cannot have true peace. You cannot be all of this. You cannot have all of this if you do not have Christ. Bottom line, if this generation does not have Christ, there will be no true happiness. This generation will only become degenerate, the worst kind of humanity. St. Paul is reminding us with these words in, uh, again, it's in Galatians 5, verses 25 to 26. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the spirit let us not be let us not become conceited provoking one another envying one another 
Again, the only way that we can truly live our lives is when we not only get in touch with our spiritual being, but to actually make it grow when we are grounded in Christ. We are truly alive when we walk side by side with our faith. There is no such thing as life without faith. Keep that in mind. Now, um, let us bow down our heads, close our eyes. Have Christ in our mind and in our hearts as we pray. Let us come together in prayer. We truly regret, Father, that oftentimes we ignore you, thinking we can manage on our own. That was a terrible mistake. We chose to put on the pedestal our ego instead of you. We humbly kneel before your very presence, realizing our mistakes, our sins, because of our pride. We are nothing without you, Father. All of these, all of these, all of what we have are because of you. We can see that now. Your Holy Spirit opened our eyes because we have long lived with our blindness. Please be with us and strengthen us for the rest of our days. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, before we uh, before we let you go and uh, end our live stream of the Bible in Focus today, I'd like to remind you that uh, please also support the Seed of God ministry. Uh, we are posting the details on where you could send your your support, your donations, at the description of this video. And need I remind you also as well, um, we will be holding soon, real soon. Actually, we'll be posting the details here for the Advent Recollection here in the State of God Ministry. I mean, um, we will be holding a face-to-face -face Advent Recollection at Popeyes this December. Right now, we are already announcing so that you would be able, so that we could give you a heads up regarding our activities for the entire year. So by December... We, uh, I think we will be posting the de the exact details in a in a week or so. We will be holding our first ever face to face Advent biblical recollection. It's a biblical exposition as well, a Bible, a biblical exposition recollection for the Advent season at Pope Pius in in Manila, and uh, details on on the registration and everything will be posted. But if you will become a member, you if you become a member of the City of God ministry, there is a very huge discount for the registration fee if you if you join us for the Advent Recollection. Now contact us on, on the details regarding this discounted uh, registration fee for members of the Seed of God ministry. And also, please do keep in mind our other activities as well. Um, and also our every Saturday, I mean every Saturday, our Bible exposition. Details are being posted every now and then at the Seed of God ministry Facebook page. Again, keep calm, Jesus on, and keep safe.